Hey guys, what's going on? Um, just finishing up our clearing of Sense Fortress. I thought I could do it in one video, but um, there are a few things we have to kind of back backtrack. And Ricard got me a few times, so so now we have the cage key uh, down here. Let's see here. Let's be in the keys. Key to the hanging cage in Sen's Fortress. If the hapless adventurer becomes fatigued during an imprudent attempt to overcome the fortress, the serpent man will not kill him, but lock him up in a lonely cage. Eventually, unless they have forgotten, they drag the victim off to who knows where. Hmm, I wonder where they go. So there's actually quite a few... Um, uh, cages that we can control and we probably will do all of them before we continue on oh my dear all right well let's go recover my body I just was thinking we have quite a few things that we should do before we go to Anor Londo, so I guess this makes sense to be in two parts. Um, and if I keep dying like that, we'll definitely have enough material. <laughs> Alright, hopefully that's just right up here at the top where I fell off. Alright. What about Berenique? Maybe that's Berenique himself. Maybe he's crestfallen because all of his knights died. Okay. Hug the wall, hug the wall, hug the wall. Okay. So, now that we have the cage key, I think one thing I want to do actually is go down and get my weapon completely upgraded. Now there is a Balder Knight here, um, but there's actually nothing over there. That's very uncommon for um, like the designers of this game. Like, If that was Dark Souls 2 or 3, there would be you know, a soul or something out there. Uh, but there's absolutely nothing, so we are just going to leave him alone because we don't need to actually talk to him. Um, and yeah, I'm just running back here, so we should. Um, because I want to upgrade my stuff, and then we can come back up through and go grab. Um, Fun little thing here, those actually go and stick into the wall over there. I don't know why they wouldn't, but you know, that is something that technically has to be programmed. So, I mean, you know, it's just cool that, you know, they bothered to do that. So, okay, let's go upgrade this to 10. Well, I'm using need any. Maybe I'll say something because we've been to Sens? I know little. Nope. Okay, so let us go. I should really. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. And it'll be a while before we uh, do anything else with that. Uh, we'll need to get the very large ember. Um, but what was I going to just do here? I don't remember. Oh, I was going to get the weapon smith and the armor smith while we have some money um, and everything else we talked about. Yeah, so now we I believe we have everything. I think I bought the bottomless box as well. I don't want to rest here. Um, in fact, I'm going to homeward. So we can just quickly go up there. Um, 
but yeah, let's go down. I guess this is the best way to do it. I don't really know. Oh, that was unlucky. I mean, lucky, <laughs> really. Yeah, I don't know if this is the best way to go. I suppose there's probably better ways to do this. Oh, I may be able to kill him in one hit now. Nice. Manservant? No. Oh, I guess I could have gone down and fallen through the hole that the giant was in. That's probably the best way to, like, show this off. Because then I could have killed him and... But... Anyway, we're here now. Uh, where are you pointing? Okay, you're pointing that way. So, and we already cleared this out. So, <laughs> this is an interesting little glitch. Um, oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, so you can actually, like, destroy that wall and have the, the serpent, like, resting on a wall that doesn't exist. I thought that was the case, because I think, I thought you only ended, oh, that was... Um, actually, we can do this now. Because we only need to go through once. That, that, um, this guy's not going to die. Anyway, the glitch is that he sometimes stands with his back on nothing here. But yeah, let's uh, take care of him. And rescue our buddy, Logan. Oh, heavens. Thank you. I say, and I'd love to resume my travels, but I must log a few things first, and I owe you a favor. I will return to the Farley Shrine. Speak with me then, so that I may impart my sorcery. Oh, hello. I'll be along later. Whoa, I'll be just fine. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, well, there we go. Big Hat Logan. The, uh, the one, the only. Now free to uh, go back to Firelink Shrine. I don't know why he would. I mean, if his goal is to, you know, get to the Regal Archives, I guess, why would he uh, be like, oh, I'm just going to go back home. Um... Is there anything else I need to do here? Oh, I said that I would go get that item and then I'll homeward bone. So let me go do that. Just last minute things here. I've never seen him in the hallway actually for that. He's usually in here. See something new every day. When you try to do things, I guess, in a different order or whatever, then um, you're gonna encounter different things. Get out of here. I mean, drop me a Flambridge if you would. All right, so I was saying, that we could go out here and um, and get something, and it's actually kind of a pain to to go through. I mean, so this is actually the, uh, when I was saying you can drop down. Um, this is the area that you drop down to, like behind that um, that man serpent. You can fall down here. I believe this is a miracle. Oh, Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring. Interesting. I didn't know you could get it here. Uh, I think we read that one before. Um, but yeah. Um, 
I don't know who, I think that's from above or something, but I'm gonna bone home. We can read it there. I think that's the one that just, I don't know which one that is. Where's no sound? Yeah, so this is the secret, guys, at Benheim. The ring is engraved with an everlasting dragon in silent slumber and masks all sound emitting from its wear. Okay. I believe that sends cleared. And I want to um, fight the golem, I guess. I kind of want to go back to Enarmando or into Firelink, but I feel like we'll have plenty of time to do that and get all of Master Logan's dialogue and Griggs's dialogue. Yeah, I mean, this is probably going to be a short episode. Um, what I am going to try to do is I'm going to try to do the Black Iron Tarkus challenge. Black Iron Tarkus channel 2017 channel chan challenge. So, yeah, I mean, Black Iron Tarkus is I think the one, the one NPC in the game that if you do it in a certain way, and I usually get it wrong, that you can summon him, get into the boss fight, and then have just the Black Iron Tarkus defeat the Iron Golem for you. And that's definitely what we're going to do. And if everything goes crazy haywire, we can, um, you know, we can finish off the Iron Golem. There's the first spell of awakening and the gargoyle fight on that rooftop. Just like looking around. Yeah, so there's nothing else here. So the trick to this, um, so yeah, here's Black Iron Tarkus, who's a Knight's Baronique, is that you summon him, but you run into the boss fight before he has a chance to actually spawn, so you spawn it with less health. If you don't do that, I don't think Aaron Targus can beat him very easily. So let's try this the best we can. We have to get in to the actual boss fight before it says summoned. There, okay, so I think we did that. Dodge this. The only thing we need to do is just not get hit. And I'm not going to do a lot in that regard. Alright, come on, Tarkus. Do me proud. Alright, I'm just going to watch. But they got to at least aggro. Come on, Iron Tarkus. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. This is definitely, uh... He's, like, taking off a sixth of his health, which he's swing. Oh, my God. Is he going to make him actually fall? Oh, his hand is right there. If not, he would have fallen off the edge. Okay, if you look at their health comparatively, uh, Iron Tigers is doing well. Unless, of course, he gets thrown off the edge. He could get picked up. What it, is this his, is this his plan? Just stand by the edge and wait for the guy to hit him? Come on, Targus. Don't fall off. Just one more hit. Just one. 
Oh, that could have actually saved him. I actually can't believe he's not falling off. Just hit him one more time. Oh, yeah! Thanks, Tarkus. Now, what is interesting is that we do run into Tarkus later, in a sense. And um, the presence of him's phantom being here and the fact that, you know, he does fight the golem and in this case wins, that he, he does survive. I mean, he is one that survives. I mean, we'll see that later. So maybe Night King Randall does survive. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, awesome. Let's read the core of the Iron Golem. Let's see what that has to tell us about the Iron Golem. Soul serving as the core of the Iron Golem, guardian of Sen's fortress and slayer of countless heroes seeking Anorlando. Originally a bone of an everlasting dragon used to acquire a huge amount of souls or create a unique weapon. I mean, it's just cool. There's not, I don't think a lot of connections or lore to be made there, but yeah, I mean, the Iron Golem obviously is a golem. He's not, he's not a thing. He's just a suit of armor p powered by a soul. And, you know, I think souls, you know, do that. Uh, they give life. Um, they also make things huge with life. And this one was created from the bone of an everlasting dragon, which is interesting. I think that's the only time something like that happens in Dark Souls 1, where the bone of a dragon is used for something. We know the bones of humans are used for lots of things, but yeah. So yeah, like that white light that we saw was a miracle. You know, we saw one in the Undead Parish over there. There's a yellow one here. Or I'm colorblind. I don't know. Maybe it's not yellow, but it's a it's a it's a different color. And of course, we can examine it for a little cutscene. Well, there it is. I mean, we've been waiting to get there this whole time. Um, we're finally here at Anne Orlando, and it's going to be quite a uh, quite a journey here. Um, and it's just uh, it's beautiful. I love getting here. Oh yeah, so I guess we should look around at some stuff. So I mean, we can see, it looks like the where we got dropped off was the right hand side of the fortress. I was looking at the two sets of, of two like towers here. And um, so yeah, it looks like, I mean, we can't really see. Up here is the Duke's archives. Um, that we can see, you know, that will go there later. I mean, most of the Duke's archives that you play in is in the mountain, but the top area is where Seath is. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is like, this is the city of the gods surrounded by this huge wall that surrounds the whole thing. You can see in the opening cinematic, it's really nice. And then this is the uh, central hall it's relevant. I wish you could run around the streets. I guess you get to do similar things like that. In Dark Souls 3, you can kind of like go in cities more rather than just being in one area. But um, yeah, so I mean, one thing that's really interesting about this place, and 
you know what? I'm going to save it because I really want to... Um, we have some time right now before I take on Anna Orlando proper. Um, you know, I'm obviously going to dedicate some time to this. I'm going to run back to... Um, Yeah, I'm just going to run back. I'm not even going to rest at a bonfire. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go back to Firelink Shrine because, to me, um, I would rather chat with people and get all that stuff and then just, we'll kind of fast forward back to Anne Orlando at the next episode. Um... But yeah, that's one thing that maybe not a lot of people know, that you can actually talk to this guy, and he will bring you back to Sims Fortress. I think sometimes people think that you're stuck here once you get here. Um, it's an interesting sky there. It looks dark and om ominous. So yeah, I guess the other thing we can look through close close up at this, which is what I believe to be a door to Anna Orlando that was covered up once they didn't want people to go there anymore. I realize now, for those of you watching, that uh, I just uh, you know went to Anna Orlando. Oh, cool. That's not very common. That uh, I just went to Anna Orlando and then I just went back. <laughs> I probably should have just like went to Anna Orlando and then played in Anna Orlando. Um, but as this is all unplanned, you know, just flying by the seat of my pants. All right. So let us see if we can get by this guy without getting hit. Cool. And make a relatively short trip to Anna Orlando. Gosh, Firelink Shrine. Uh, since I can't rest there, I'm actually gonna rest here for fear of, you know, making some. Probably gonna fall off a building or run into an enemy and get my head chopped off. Did get a humanity at some point, right after I turned human in um, in Sun's Fortress. I noticed. All right, you can't fall off this, by the way. Like, I think you can roll off of it. All right. So, I guess we've kind of killed off everyone. <laughs> um, so, or they've left or whatever. So, let's just talk to uh, Framp, see if he has anything weird to say. I am pleased. Is it something? Those who seek the realm of many have faith. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Farewell. So, yeah, once again, someone just kindled that bonfire I just rested at and I got one extra oh hello again I was waiting to tell you master Logan has returned and he tells me that he has you to thank well we are both in your debt now thank you sincerely he's just over there go along and have a chat there you are I was expecting you as promised I will share my sorcery Short and to the point. Let's read them. 
Okay, we've seen that. Great heavy. Homing Soul Mass. Sorcery developed by Big Hat Logan. Life originates in the soul. No wonder the soul mass draws toward it. This sorcery is a window into Seeker Logan's methods. Hmm. So yeah, when you create the soul mass, there's five beams of souls that appear above you, and then they'll like home towards an enemy that's close enough. This sorcery is a window into Seeker Logan's methods. Soul Spear. Sorcery developed by Big Hat Logan. A symbol of Logan's strength, the Soul Spear is referenced repeatedly in the legends, and it is said to be on par with Lord Glynn's lightning, who has a lightning spear. Magic Weapon. I think we saw this. Many warriors learn sorcery just for this. Yeah, I said I would do it. I only need 10. I'll buy this. Same with magic shield. And then we have soul arrow. Yep. And then we're back up here. Okay. I will stay here for the time being. Speak to me again to further your knowledge. So again, this, you know, this game is just really interesting in its... Oh, do we? We never talked to Domnall either. I don't think so, at least. Um, this game is just really interesting in terms of like, so Logan, you know, he doesn't say anything and he just keeps getting trapped and we keep saving him and he doesn't, you know, you don't have a talk button. Hello there. I quite understand. Stun like I can't. No results, eh? Well, the way of sorceries is a long, hard road. He doesn't say much, but you learn about him through other characters, through Rickert, through Griggs, through the crestfallen warrior through the un from the crestfallen merchant as well i mean you hear about him but you don't learn a lot from him but i think Greg's will tell us a bit about him oh hello i appreciate the attention but you really should speak to master logan I did. that will certainly do you more good have you ever cast one of logan's spells isn't it exhilarating as he sees it there are no gods no transcendence only truth and Logan only wishes to elucidate it. It is this heretical methodology that allowed Logan to advance sorcery to the point that he has. In a word, he is a hero. Despite the awful rumors, time will tell. The annals of history will prove dispassionate. So yeah, that I mean that dialogue right there is why I was excited to come back and do that before Anne Orlando. To me is the key to this whole game um logan believes that there is no gods and this is what i believe this is what i think is the kind of key element to all this um gwen was just a being before he found the, the great soul in the fire um you know the isolith queen of isolith um Nito were all just beings that were able to amass an immense amount of power through their soul, through this great souls, much as like the Iron Golem just did what we just saw, that like a soul was what made that thing come to life and be more powerful than it was as a, instead of being a, a heap of armor. And, you know, Logan is in constant search for the truth beyond this um and that you know like we were talking about um old man mcloif as we saw in one of the coins and he was a god of like drinking and whatever and i'm like why would you call a god old man right and it seems to me to indicate that you know these gods became gods and their myths kind of went through the ages but they are just humans and they've they've nothing special except that they were lucky to find something and i think what logan here is doing is the true magic and the true like i don't think miracles are anything you know they're tales from the gods they're weak they're insignificant and they're relatively meaningless in the larger scheme of things but what logan is doing by harnessing the souls and doing all these things is the real true 
nature. It's similar to what Seath is doing, and I think Seath also knows a lot of what Logan is trying to find. You know, Seath was there from the beginning with uh, Gwyn, and, um, you know, Seath... Yeah, we'll talk about Seath when we get to Seath, obviously, but he, you know, was born without scales, which is the thing that makes dragons everlasting and immortal, and therefore coveted by the undead. Um, but Seath was a dragon born without any of that, and he finds something, which I think, you know, is on track with what Logan's looking for, that transcends all of this stuff. You know, see, find something truly remarkable. But again, we'll get to that. In fact, we'll hear that from Logan much later. But, um, yeah, let's let's talk to Griggs and see. I don't think he has much more to say. Also, he, he mentioned, he's like, have you ever cast one of his spells? It's invigorating, isn't it? Like, he's really in love with Logan. Have you ever cast one of Logan's spells? Isn't it exhilarating? As he sees it, there are no gods, no transcendence, only truth. And Logan only wishes to elucidate it. It is this heretical methodology that allowed Logan to advance sorcery to the point that he has. In a word, he is a hero. Despite the awful rumors, time will tell. The annals of history will prove dispassionate. Yes. Goodbye, then. So, Do stay safe. Yeah, like Engi. What Engi was to pyromancers, Logan is to sorcerers. Hello there. Very well indeed. Farewell. Uh, they're both heretics in their own ways. And uh, that makes him a hero in his mind. And he says the annals will prove dispassionate. Like, you know, in time, without knowing Logan, you know, specifically... And, you know, his heretical ways, once, you know, is made evident that what he found is truth, um, we aren't going to care that he was a heretic. At least that's what Grig says. And, I mean, I tend to believe him. And it is interesting to kind of compare what's going on with him with... I wondered if he was going to try to come get me. Um, what's happened with Logan in the, in the next games, which are, you know, technically after this game. But maybe we'll look at that at another time. Hey, Shemai. I didn't expect to meet anybody here. I suppose great minds think alike, eh? <laughs> hmm. I'm afraid I... that so he should have more armor yeah so he kind of has the the armor of the bosses you beat from here on out so let's see what the golem helm says specifically head of the iron golem guardian of the ancient sens fortress slayer of heroes who ventured forth to anorlando without its core it's a mere hunk of iron and can be equipped as solid protective gear but its immense weight hinders stamina recovery Oh, I get... Oh, Lord. Okay. So, yeah, we'll be coming back here and we'll be learning more about the bosses we fight through this. We don't have to buy these, but... Um, you know, I might buy something so that he can... T I mean, I wonder if buying the master key... I don't know if I want that, though, because it... Let's buy... I like helms, so let's buy the helm. Let's see what thing he has to tell us. Hmm. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade eventually. So I am willing to share some tips. The cursed ghosts of New Londo are formidable foes. To face them, you will require special arms or a cursed body. The quickest way to be cursed? Try the bug-eyed lizards in the sewer. Desperate measures, to be sure. Yeah, I guess we don't have to go through all this guy's stuff because yeah, it's all just like hints on the game. It's not really lore, but he tells you some stuff very directly, but it costs some money. Hmm. You are a fine trading partner. Rumor, it may be, 
But I have heard of a surviving ancient dragon who resides in this land. A coterie of undead serves the dragon, as they train to become dragons themselves. Sounds unlikely, but you never know, do you? I take it all back. Yeah, so there is an everlasting dragon, the same as from the beginning of the world, beginning of times, arch trees and everlasting dragons. There is one alive today, the one that um, that uh, Gwyn and his kind did not uh, did not kill. And as I say, people are worshipping that dragon and they're trying to become dragon themselves. They're trying to transcend. Um, so we'll see more about that later. Hmm. I'm afraid. Okay. Well, apparently it's like a certain amount of souls gives you a certain amount of tips. I think I'm good, though. Thank you. That was a fine trade. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon. And we'll make another fine trade, of course. Yeah, probably. I'll probably buy something I don't need to buy from you. Is that guy still just sitting there? All right. Well, um, with a couple minutes left, I think I'm going to go down to Blight Town. So we can take care of all the rest of the stuff down there. And then, and actually I can level up my Estes Flask. Well, I, we can do that right at uh, Anor Orlando, so I don't need that. But um, let's just do this and then next episode I'll just be in Anor Orlando. Of the Drakes to Black Town. When I originally played this, I really didn't like that it like changes like tone, like color tone once you get in here. But I guess it makes sense. Ugh. Cause like there's like a mist in the air or you know the way that the world comes through on top. It's weird. But just in general, like this is this is just not a place that anyone likes to be ever. So I mean, that just adds to it, I guess. Oh, I should have maybe. <laughs> We'll, we'll come down here. I mean, once we can travel down here, I guess it'll be more easy to do all that stuff, but um, I should have joined the Forest Covenants before coming here. Just for maximum use of our time. So the main things that I want to do right now while I'm down... Yeah, we'll have to come down here for uh, Ash Lake and stuff too. So the main thing that I want to do here why I'm just doing this right now is that... Um, I wanted to fight Laurentius here and then see if Quailana had anything special to say. Ugh. Oh, he poisons too, that's cool. Why can't I ever hit these guys? Alright. Not the, not the most difficult opponent. Of course I say that as I'm about to die. It's mainly these guys that are tough. 
But yeah. So. That didn't do us very good. But it's the finish. It's the end of Laurentius' story. So. wonder if Quilana will have anything to say about him. If he went and talked to her at all. Or if he just came down here and went hollow. Ah. Uh, it has been some time. Truth be told. I yeah, pretty much did. Hmm. I have a favor to ask. My mother, the Witch of Isolith, was one of the primeval lords. Her power came from the soul that she found near the first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own. But she failed to control it. The flame of chaos engulfed mother and my sisters and molded them into deformed creatures. Only I escaped. And now I'm here. But my mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you. Free mother and my sisters from the flame of chaos. I cannot do it myself. I lack the strength and the bravery. But you, I realize what I am asking. But please, free their poor souls. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. But surely a thousand years of atonement is enough. And there it is. That is a lot of stuff there. So, she says, will you do a favor, kill the bed of chaos, basically. Um, and she goes on to say that that was a thousand years ago. So we know that. Um, at least since she's created chaos. Um, but yeah, the whole story about exactly what happened. She found the flame. That was the source of her power. Not, she wasn't a god or anything. I mean, I don't think anyone has called Quay, uh, Isolith a god in this game, but, um, you know, similar to Gwyn. Gwyn's path was down Anne Orlando and that whole thing. Nito and, you know, Isolith had a very different plan and path and stuff like that. But, so, like, um, she so said that, that Isolith tried to use her soul to create flame herself now the timeline of this is all distorted but i believe that she was trying to also prevent the um from the flame from fading it might have been bef after before yeah you know what maybe it was after so maybe gwyn dies his flame is fading so he tries to lengthen it and Queen of Isleth is just trying to do stuff. Then she creates the Chaos Demons, which is why, you know, the the Black Knights are trying to fight them after Gwyn has been sacrificed. Because she tries to kind of recreate the flame afterwards. But she creates Chaos. Um, but that makes her the mother of Pyromancy, the first person to try to use flame as a matter of magic. And it also makes her part of Chaos. Now, it does say that the Bed of Chaos, or whatever, you know, Quailana actually says, engulfs her. So we're to believe that she's not the bed of chaos herself. She is likely trapped. She says her and mother and her sisters. Now we know that there's seven sisters from the cinematic. And we currently know of Quailana, Quailag, the fair maiden, and then two, um, there's two with the, with the bed of chaos which we'll see when we get there there's two sides there's one in the center and that's where we'll find the witch of isolith kind of remains and then the two on the side which would be probably two of the sisters so there's two sisters left unaccounted for but um we can at least meet or interact with or whatever with five of the seven uh daughters from years and years and years ago thousand years ago yeah, so, I mean, she said it all right there. I mean, that was the dialogue I was looking for when I came down here first, so I'm glad I came back. Hmm. I have a favorite. My yeah. mother, the Witch of Isolith. Her power came from the soul yeah, that she found soul. near the first flame. first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own. Right. 
The flame of chaos. The flame of chaos is what they call it. mother and my sisters. And mold them. Yeah, and so that's why we also have... creatures. Only I escaped. And now I am Yeah, here. she's like human. She's but my normal. mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you. Free. I cannot do it myself. But you, I realize what I am asking. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. Yeah, so... No luck, hmm? Well, but do not keep me waiting. Yeah, I think she leaves at some point. That's the other reason why I wanted to kind of come here or whatever. So, anyway, that should do it for this episode. A um, lot of crazy stuff here. I mean, it's only going to get more and more so the deeper into Anne Orlando we get. But, um, yeah, so um, that is uh, Sense Fortress and a little bit of Loose Ends. Next time... We're going to be in Anne Orlando. See you then.